Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, the internet world. Welcome to Auto Merch Talk. It's a podcast we created to talk about auto, automotive stuff. And um, we work for a company car, called Car Data. We take pictures and videos of cars at dealerships. And uh, today we have a few topics we're going to talk about. Um, there's a few few good stuff happening in, in the automotive industry. So we're going to start here with Edwin Gomez. What can you tell us, Edwin? What's going on? What's new? There's a lot of things going on out there. A lot of things going on out there. Uh, one thing I can say, uh, Ford is recalling about 125,000 of their Bronco. Ford Bronco. Yeah. Ford Bronco Sports and Escapes. Yes. Yeah. If, if you own one of these cars, a 2021 or 2022 model, there's a recall on the brake lines. Uh, I guess they're replacing the brake lines for the rear. What good good thing is that they said there's no there hasn't been any accidents or injuries so far related to the brake issue. So yeah, because the brake issue, what what it was doing is like let's say if you had to stop suddenly, right? You had to give yourself more time to stop. That's not good. Which in a moment, you know, if you want to stop and you need a couple of seconds, you're probably gonna run into whatever you're trying not right. to. Right. Okay. So that's that's a pretty. That's not good. Yeah, but they're they're handling it. They're handling yep. it. Just just call your your Ford dealership and then I'm sure they'll walk you through it. Super simple. Yeah. Now, hmm. I just want to let everyone know, if you're looking to buy a Hellcat, you got about two years left. That's right. In 2023, they plan on ending the Hellcat. It's one of America's famous, famous muscle cars. That is nuts. You got the, the Dodge Challenger, the Charger, the Durango, the Jeep Cherokee, the Trackhawk, even the 1500 TRX Dodge Ram. All that's going to come to an end. All of that is going to come to an end, but it's coming to an end because they're preparing to launch their own electric muscle car. That's going wow. to be around 2024. Yeah. And it's going to be, uh, let's see, this is not, oh no, that's what you just said. The Challenger, all of these. I, I wonder how, how the American muscle fans are going to take that because it's, it's, yes, the electric car is more powerful because it's electric. But aren't you gonna miss the vroom vroom sound of the engine? Yeah, the but, vibration of the yeah, but we already they, they, we, they kind of already went through that when the Mustang came out when with the what was the Mustang the electric Mustang called the Mach E? I mean, and that thing is yes, the Mach and that thing is nuts. The thing is fast, right? Is is it weird? Yes, because you're it's not the sounds we're used to, but they can actually be faster, right? So that's, yeah, that's, so if you're in the market for a Hellcat, now's the time to buy one. Now's the time to buy one. If not, you're gonna have to wait some years. It won't years be available or, anymore. Or that's gonna drive up the prices of them. Right. Because if they're still if they're still out there without being sold and they're no longer being made, right. it's gonna become a vehicle that people are looking for. And it's a very popular vehicle right now. A lot of people love these cars. Yeah. I love yeah. the way they sound. I, I do too. I was. I, I, I. That's why I use the word uh, what we used to. Because when I first heard it, I didn't like like the whiny sound and stuff. But then when, because I saw a video of the actual uh, Maki on a right. track and stuff. I mean, I, if you lower the volume, you can't tell the thing's electric. It looks right. like it's it's like the Tesla, the Tesla Plaid, one of the fastest cars up right now. It's got yes. a thousand horsepower. Yeah, supposedly it was the fast. It was clocked as the fastest so far. I think they still at about 130k. I think. Wow. For that wow. car. Yeah, so in other news, if you own a BMW or Mercedes-Benz, if you're leasing it, you can't return it to any dealership you choose. It has to be a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz dealership. So a California used dealership, luxury dealership, is, getting, is suing Mercedes-Benz and BMW for not letting them, not letting customers return their cars or lease to buy a new car. I, I personally think that's not fair. I think as a consumer, you should be able to choose which car are you going to get next, right? Yep. You shouldn't be stuck in a BMW or Mercedes. What happens if you want to downgrade? And then the dealership that's in the lawsuit is actually Calabasas uh, Luxury Motor Cars, right. which they have a lot of highline vehicles and right. stuff like that. So, you know, shouldn't be an issue for Mercedes or BMW. But again, I, I want to say, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know if this was a rule or not, but I have to say uh, the way times are now, I can see why they're trying to hold on. Right. Trying to keep to their, their customers. Product. Yeah. Right. They're trying to hold on to their product. They're trying to hold on to their customers. So I'm kind of like 50 50 on this story because right. I could see how, if it was my company, I'd probably, well, maybe I wouldn't do it as much. Still, I, I still think it's, it's the consumer's choice 
to, you know, to want to buy at a different dealership. You know, what happens if you had a bad experience at that dealership? You don't want to return there. You know, you just don't want to deal with them anymore. I, I think it might also have to do with the payoff because that's one of the things that I was reading that they just don't want any no, they don't want uh, third party payoffs. Right. I mean, maybe in the back end, they've had issues with people actually paying some of these third parties, you know? Right. I mean, I'm sure there's more to it because they're not going to just going to block someone out. That right. Way. But that is news for those of you who do have right. a BMW or Mercedes, just know, pretty much got to go back to the dealer. Yep. <clears throat> Another luxury car. Huh, Porsche. What's the Porsche. Porsche? Porsche is out to reduce battery making carbon footprint. So they're not only worried about making the having electric vehicles, right. but they also they're worried about in making these batteries, uh, if 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 something has to be shipped, how is it being right. shipped? And that, that they're, they're going deep into this. They're wow. going real well because you know it, it was spurred by the, the tightening emissions regulations in Europe and China. Right. So that's that's a big part of it. So they're just trying to. They even said that Porsche is pressuring suppliers and manufacturers of batteries and components to exclusively use renewable energy. Mm, so that's what I'm saying. Right. So they kind of want their battery parts, their electric battery parts, to be transferred by an electric right. vehicle or right. something like that. They, that Now that's big because I mean, they're really, not only are they trying to make something that's gonna reduce the emissions, right. but they're also reducing the emissions the in, the, it is, it's nice. in the processing because yeah. because it, it takes a lot of um, processing and extraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you batteries. know, if it goes from a plane to a boat to a car, right. whatever it might be, right. That all leaves its right. emission footprint on it. They're looking at that, but that, that, that's big. Not, not only that, they're, they're also, <laughs> creating a battery, a new battery that says will pack more power, charge faster, and have a lighter carbon footprint, obviously. So that's pretty cool. And they plan on, on electrifying the McCann, the compact crossover, the Boxster, the Roadster, and the mid-sized Cayenne to make electric cars. To make electric cars, yeah. Those, those are the popular, the popular those, models. Yeah, those are the ones that sell. Those are the right. ones that, mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Man, everybody's going electric. As... Uh, just the way to go. At this rate right now, I, I think it's possible by 2040 we're You know, electric. I would start, when we started talking about this, I was like, excuse me, there's too much that needs to be done. To the, but these people, they're... They're doing it. Yeah, they, 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 they really put their foot on that. So many different companies right are doing away. so many different things related to the EVs. So that's awesome. It is. It is. It is. It is. That's pretty cool. more news now we'll move on to brooklyn new york <laughs> brooklyn if you live in brooklyn new york the revel unveiled electric vehicle fast charging super hub it has about 25 brand diagnostic charging hubs it's pretty cool that is pretty cool and now i was reading that the reason they're doing that is most of the charging stations are out of the area they're closer to airports and things right. like that. Right, so lined up. This, yeah, this is like in an actual neighborhood. It's more accessible to people right. without having to go so far out. It's, it's located in the old Pfizer Manufacturing Building on Flushing Avenue, if you guys are ever around there. Yeah, and it says, uh, where was it that I read? That it's actually like while it's charging, because it says something like it takes 15, 20 minute, uh, 15 to 30 minutes to charge. Um, charging a, a car, Cost up to 39 cents per kilowatt, which turns into 15, 20 dollars for a full charge. That's not so bad. that's not bad. That's definitely cheaper than a tank of gas. Yes. I don't care what I, you drive. I, I agree. Twenty dollars is not getting you anything. Right. Even so, when gas was, was at 235 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Still expensive. So while you're there and you're charging and you're waiting, you could actually go inside the building. They have like working spaces for you. They have a huge food court. Obviously, right. because it's Brooklyn, you know, they right. got to make they it. They got everything for you there. Yeah, yeah, they got to make it That's really interesting. Nice and, yeah, yeah, that is Now, now you, you imagine th those types of hubs all around the country? Yep. That, that's how it's going to be. That's that, that, that'd be huge, huge. So, yeah, guys, all, all, all we hear in the news is about EV stuff. A lot of EV, a lot of charging stations, a lot of stuff different companies are doing to, to speed up the process, I believe, of the EV, the EV world that we're coming into slowly but surely. 
The funny part about the Brooklyn thing was I was reading a lot of, I guess, the cabbies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they're trying to stop a lot of this electric stuff because they feel like they're being pushed out. Really? Yeah. They're being, they feel like they're being pushed out. They've actually went to court and asked for um, people who need to get special licenses and things like that to be able to, <clears throat> I guess, uh, what they're worried about is Uber and Lyft. Right. And I'm saying in New York because I'm originally from New York, so I know that these cabbies, they right. protect their stuff. Right. <laughs> well, it's funny. You're talking about that. In China, you know how they have charging hubs for, for Teslas and electric cars? Uh -huh. So they're having problems where regular vehicles, gas vehicles are parking there and taking those spots up just, just to, to piss, I guess, to piss the electric vehicle people, owners off because they're not happy with it. Right? Oh, wow. So what Tesla is doing now is putting a... Some type of uh, of a tire blocker, so they have to go on an app to unlock it, and you can only park an electric vehicle in there. Oh, that's so cool. interesting! Where, 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 that's interesting. That's where in was China. That? That's China. in China. Yeah, happening in China. That is interesting. With, with Tesla. So I don't think we have that problem here. I've never seen anybody. I've to never pick seen up. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a lot by us. I mean, I I pass. I mean, they're not, I wouldn't call them stations, but I pass areas that have about two or three. Right, you see them yeah. in like shopping malls yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And they, I don't, I've never seen a problem with it. Actually, when you remember when we was in Dallas, when we was in Dallas, the hotel we was at had like a fourth of their parking. Lot. Oh yeah, they did. They had like a little corner, they and they had a long row, and it was all for EV. When well, that was empty, right? <laughs> that was empty, right? I mean, and and also I'm noticing a lot more Teslas on the road lately. Yeah, me too. A lot of Tesla's I think that's there. coming just from the used market, most likely. Could be. And now they're out I there because I'm starting to see them a lot more lately. So yeah, looks like we're on a good path. Yes, electric cars. Those of you that want the electric cars, um, it's going to happen. And it's happening already. It's happening. Slowly but surely, it's happening. Yep. So there you have it, guys. This is a quick update. There's a few, few stuff happening in the autom automotive industry world. If you guys like what you hear, please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a comment below to let us know if you want us to talk about different topics, you can let us know. Other than that, thanks for stopping by, guys.